Yeah, he he in the park.
is Willie Winter is here. Amen. 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 First give an honor to God. First give an honor to God. Amen. It's a pleasure to be here today. I couldn't have been here today. You know, I, I, I talk straight from So let's give it a go. I've learned how to live holy.
so that we may be able to comfort those who go through similar afflictions. And Father, we want to pray for this family, that you would be a supernatural comfort to them, that God, you will remind them that the one thing that death cannot take away is the memories that are within their heart and within their mind. And Father God, as long as they live, they have another <coughs> opportunity, oh Father God, to live out the legacy that those small, still nuggets over the years that have been taught and shared so that, Father, you would be glorified and her legacy will continue to live. And then, Father, we ask that you would bless this service. It is strange, Father God, for us to be in this funeral home, Father God, with masks on, and yet this is what we have to do to make sure, oh, Father God, we protect one another. And so, God, I ask that you would just guide us in this process, that we realize that even while we may be grieving, oh God, there is hope beyond the grief. And so, Father God, I pray that you will anoint what you're going to do on today as we honor the life and legacy of our beloved sister. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. 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 We will now have another selection. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights. But when I look around and I think things over. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. So I, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds they know. I can hardly see the road. I've asked the question alone. Lord, why so much pain? For he knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes, they cannot see. Instead of complaining, I just lift my head toward heaven and I say, Thank you, Lord. I've been lying on. Thank you, Lord. I've been talked about. Thank you, Lord. Power, I won't complain. God has been so good to me. He's been good to me more than this whole world or you can ever be. He's been so good, so good, so good to me. He tries, and I mean that, y'all. He tries all of my tears away. Turn my midnight into day. So I'll just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't complain. Right. At this time, we will have resolution read.
with a master plan that will help you to endure this specific life challenge as one of the as one of understanding and as you keep living your trust in God. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If there were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. John 14, 1 through 3. Whereas our Heavenly Father has whispered, and it is well, and called our sister from labor to rest. We can take comfort in knowing that God is true and loving, who makes no mistakes. Whatever he does or allows is always best. Whatever he allows is done with love. The pain reaches deep and you may not understand, but know that God is in control and he is the comfort. You will need to get through this difficult time. Amen. Family members and friends of Freddie May Warfield know that Crossroads Community Church shares your, your hours of sorrow and your deepest in prayers of it. Therefore, it is resolved on the second day of May in the year of our Lord, 2020, a copy of this resolution is being placed in our church file and the original given to the bank. So I'm going to submit it by Christopher Gregor Parker, Senior Pastor of Church. Amen. 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 At this time, I'm going to ask that if there is anyone who would like to give remarks, the family has allowed at that time. Uh, I would ask that you would, uh, for our program, it says that uh, for two minutes. And so if we can respect that time, if there's anyone that would like to say any, anything, I'm going to ask that you would line up against this wall. We'll take the first four, and, and then we will move forward. If there's anyone that would like to say anything. <laughs> Anyone else? We just want to line up here. Okay. Two minutes. Uh, yes. <laughs> and I'll be here. Brother May, it's my first cousin. And I remember years ago when we were in the country, we loved the kids and y'all know. She would always look out for all of us, everybody. And so as we grew up, I grew up and she had her. Her, her little baby girl, Rhonda. I was a little bit older than, I'm a little bit, just a little bit older than Rhonda. <laughs> but Pearl would allow me to babysit her. And so when I babysat Rhonda, I learned how, to, from that I learned how to be a mother. How to be a mother to a child. Because Pearl allowed me the opportunity to help her, you know, take care of her. I love this young lady. And I remember when Said this and be quiet. I remember when she fell and she lost a memory. And we would go over there and she'd say, I don't know you. And so my daughter would always say, I'm your favorite cousin, Pearl. I don't know you. Mm -hmm. But what I want to say most in part of it is Pearl found her way to church. Amen. She she knew how to, she didn't forget where her church was. She didn't forget who God is. So she came to worship him to the best of her ability. She found her way to church and she found her way back home. Amen. So for you to forget some things, it was, it was okay with me. If she didn't know my name, it was fun. But she knew who God was. And she came to serve him with all our heart. And for that family, I would say, keep your head up. Because it's one thing we all know that God is in control of everything. And when we give our life to Him, all is well. Be strong and be courageous for the Lord is with you. Amen. <laughs> 
Good morning. Um, my name is Ashley, and I'm pretty much the oldest of the Dafe grandchild. I've kind of just indoctrinated myself into Pearl's life. And, uh, you know, when I think about Granny Pearl, it's just on behalf of the great kids, there's, you know, it's when y'all think about when you go to your granny's house, there's a sense of like happiness, right? Like purity, pure love. Um, granny's always gentle with you. Uh, soft voice, always feeding you. Um, and you can tell Granny anything, and Granny would be upset with you. And so we had that in our hearts going to visit Granny, or when Granny would come over. It was Grandma Pearl, we're all over her. Didn't care that she was getting older, we were all over her. Um, and so what, what, what I remember is her softness. Um, I always associated the name Pearl with just beauty, softness. She always reminded me of a girl. And so um, one story in particular is, well, often a Rhonda will call me or Keegan and say, Granny is not listening. She's not listening. She's still driving. She's sneaking off to the to, to, to gamble. And she, you know, she's not listening to us. So we need you to talk to her. Um, and so I said, OK, OK, I'll, I'll call Granny. Or she's not taking her meds. We need you to call her. And so I would call Granny. And I would say, hey, Granny. She'd always say, hey, sugar, hey, sugar. And I'd say, Granny, you're in trouble. What happened? Did Mommy tell on me? And I would say, yep, yep, she told me. She told me. And I'd say, Granny, you know, you, you can't be driving, Granny. You can't be sneaking off, Granny. You got to take your meds. And so she and I would talk about everything. Um, and after going back and forth, because her story would be very different from Keenan's story. And story. Um, I would say, Granny, please. Please, Granny, you got to take your meds. And so she would say, okay, baby, I'll do it for you. And so I would stay on the phone with her, she'd take her meds, or she promised me she wouldn't drive. And so after that conversation, I made it a point to call grandkids to make sure they knew I was still the favorite. Because <laughs> <laughs> she always listened to me, and they would hate that. Like, you know, I, I, I would get yelled at over the phone. But I'm going to miss her laughter. I'm going to miss her love. She got the best hugs. Uh, I'm going to miss her beautiful face and just her kind tone. She just had just very gentle. And so uh, I'm here for you guys if, if y'all ever need anything. Um, but, but know that she's at rest now and she's at peace. And that makes me feel really good. So just wanted to share that. Thank you. She was grateful. She was amazing. 
that would take you to the one that was helping you to raise issues with the poor. Was it was funny. She was there at the beginning. And the day I got the call. And you don't see someone often. Sometimes they just come off your head. And uh, I was in the trend and all of a sudden I thought about it. I have to remember it. And she said, he, he said yes. Next morning I get a call from my mom. Give me the news, but we have a whole trend. And just happy little thing that you know, I never see her. Never really anything. And it helps just for life. And I absolutely share that she meant a lot to me. Thank you. Amen. Thanks to all of those who are here, and I'm sure there are many of you in this room, and those that are watching online, who share many of stories about Sister Warfield's life. And yet, I believe at this time, because the reality of it is that there is grief uh, that is real. Yes. And so um, there is a word that I think God wants to share. Um, I hope to share it today. Um, it's coming out of John chapter 11. There are two verses that I just want to lift up real briefly. Uh, John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die do you believe this i want to talk just for a brief moment about there is hope beyond the grief there is hope beyond the grief let us pray father we're so grateful again for the life and legacy of sister warfare we pray oh god that you will now prepare our hearts prepare our minds to hear from you so that, Father God, you can provide all the comfort that we need once we leave here, knowing that life must continue with us, oh, Father, where true life begins and ends with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we pray for your word, we pray for your spirit, we pray for your comfort to provide to thee, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church of the Year was 1980. <laughs> Soulful sounds of a R&B group coming out of uh, California. Had a great title and a great single record that was entitled Both Joy and Pain. They, 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 that, that, that phraseology that shot to number one was a great aspect because it captured the juxtaposition of probably what many of you are feeling right now. Both joy as well as pain. It's like sunshine and rain. The fact is, if you are not engaged in understanding of your humanity, to recognize that in times like these, the memories bring about joy. But then there are times like these when you sit and begin to think it also brings about pain. But the question that we have to ask this morning is how do I deal with both my joy and my pain when I'm in this grieving state? Is there a hope for what I'm going through and what you are experiencing right now? Well, that hope is found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In John chapter 11, uh, the Bible says that Jesus is, is walking with his disciples and he gets a message and that message is, is, says simply is this, he whom you love is sick. Let me pause here parenthetically because sometimes we think when we are going through things in life that the Lord Jesus don't love us. But the text helps us to understand that's the very opposite because the Bible says that not only did he love Lazarus, but he stayed two days longer just to show his power as well as his glory. It was in this process that he began to teach the disciples something. That uh, uh, lesson of discipleship is that he is ultimately in control. They are on their way to where Lazarus has been buried. It's been a couple of days now. 
Martha goes out to uh, Jesus and says, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. He, he says, well, show me where you lay him. And he begins to tell her this verbiage. Listen to what he says. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. If we're going to have hope beyond the grief, the first thing we need to do is to have hope in the person of Jesus Christ. You say, well, why would I have hope in the person of Jesus Christ? Well, first of all, you have to understand, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Let's break those two things down. First, the resurrection. Why do we need to believe in a person who has the ability to be resurrected? Well, the first thing you have to realize is that all of us are sinners. We were born into sin. We were shaped into iniquity. As a result of that, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That means eternal separation from God. So that when you die as a sinner, you also can die the second death and you be eternally separated from God. But I like what God did, something that you and I could do for ourselves. The Bible says that while we were yet sinning, Christ died on our behalf. Yeah. While we were out there doing our own thing, while we were out there hating on other folk and being hated on, the fact remains is that God decided to send his son to die on our behalf. Yeah. But the Bible says this as well. He says that while we have sinners, Christ died for us. But here's the thing. God gave his only son as a gift yeah. for you and I. And he died in our place on a hill called Calvary, but he didn't stay in the grave because on the third day he got up being resurrected, having power over sin and death. That's good news. You say, well, why is that good news? Because the Bible helps us to understand that if I put my trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who's already said that I am the resurrection, which means that whatever the death comes your way, I've got the power to resurrect you because I'm the only one that's ever been resurrected and never died again. Amen. That's good news for us. Amen. But not only do we have to have uh, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, he also says, I am the resurrection, but he also says, I am the life. In other words, you cannot live and have an eternal, abundant life without a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I know you think life is because you're driving what you're driving and living where you're living and you're working where you're working. Now, there's some folk who ain't got cars nowadays. There's some folk who ain't got all the other stuff that we count as luxuries now. Now, during this pandemic, we find out what's really important. Right. It ain't about your car. It ain't about your house. It ain't about what you have return or whatever roof or the suit you got. Baby, life is real, but so is death. But that life has to start with a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So much so that you don't want to get to a point where death comes your way. And if you die tonight, if you fold up your tent tonight, I got one question. Where would you go? <laughs> are, are, are you sure you don't know where you're going? Are you sure that you've been hooked up with the Holy One to say that if I close my eyes tonight, the next person I will see is the Lord Jesus Christ? <laughs> hope beyond the grief because we hope in the person of Jesus Christ. But not only do we hope in the person, of Jesus Christ, but I love this in verse 26. We also got a hope in the promises of Jesus Christ. Listen to what he says. He says, He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Mm -hmm. That's good news. That, that, that if death comes your way and you are hooked up with the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, You're gonna live. I, I know you're trying to figure out, well, how if I die, shall I live? Because the fact remains, here it is. When God, in Genesis chapter 2, God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed the root cock in him. He formed man out of the dust of the ground. That's why when you take a bath, you got that little ring going around because you made of dirt. <laughs> but now when he breathed the root cock in you, the spirit, and he breathed the root cock, which also means the imago day, the soul, 
So when God decides to take the soul out of this old body that has been rippled with sin and everything else, and God takes it out, then he's going to give us a new body so that we can live with him forever. But that's not for everybody. Y'all remember Astroworld back in the day, right down the street. Everybody as a kid wanted to go to Astroworld, but here's the problem. The problem is you could not go to Astroworld without getting a ticket. Everybody had a desire to go to Astroworld. Everybody wanted to go to Astroworld, but you could not get in without a ticket. And everybody has a desire to want to go to heaven, but you cannot get in without your ticket of belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that if you die, you will live again. Amen. Notice, us, oh, notice the other promise. The other side of the promise, he says, believe in me will never die. He's not talking about physical death. He's talking about the eternal damnation death. That, that when you die and when the if you are unbeliever you go into hell and hell goes into the lake of fire brimstone he's talking about being eternally separated from God you and I have a choice first of all we know that death is real but so is life in Jesus Christ and if you believe upon him and have faith in him he says that if you die and believe in me, listen, you're going to have life and you will never see the second death. That's good news. Because at the end of the day, you want to be right with the Lord, especially in this day and time. Because it's not about your age. It's not about your money. It's not about your education. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And the only thing that's going to be, be able to provide us hope is to recognize that by faith we are hooked up with him. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm not talking about joining a church. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ who will dry your tears and provide you with joy even in the midst of your grief. He's the only one. Can't happen by alcohol. Can't happen by sex. Can't happen by having a whole lot of money. It can only happen when you have an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. So if today, if today you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I encourage you that you get hooked up with him and all it is is a belief. Listen, you can't change your life. He's died for everything you done did and everything you think about doing. He's done already paid the price for it. But he has given you an opportunity to recognize because since Orfield brought us here for a reason, is to help us to know that death is real, but so is life. Yeah, yeah. And so as a result of that, if you ever, ever, ever want to see her again, I'm reminded, I'm closing here, of a friend of mine tells of a story of a father who was in his deathbed and he's saying his final goodbyes to his children. He tells Mary, his oldest daughter, see you later, Mary. Tell his oldest son, Tom, see you later, Tom. He tells his younger son, Scott, see you later, Scott. But then he tells his younger daughter, Pam, he says, goodbye, Pam. Pam said, well, wait, wait. You told everybody else, see you later. But you told me, Goodbye. She said, why is it that you told me goodbye and told them? See you later. She said, he said, baby, what you fail to realize, all of them are saved. All right. And so I'll see them later on the other side. You're the only one that is not saved. And so I need to say bye-bye to you because you can't go where I'm going unless you get saved. I believe that's an encouraging word what Perlman would say to you guys. You can't go where I'm going unless you get hooked up with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are the hope beyond the grief. We thank you for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for the life and legacy of Sister Pearly May Warfield. We pray, oh God, that you will continue to provide this family comfort 
during their time of grief, knowing that their strength will be in you because, Father God, you are the God of all comfort, who will comfort us through all of our afflictions. So we love you, and we thank you for her life and her legacy. But most of all, we thank you, Father God, that she's with you. To be absent from the body is to be present with you. So, Father, we bless you, we thank you, and we praise you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, before we dismiss, it's always our policy to thank God for this day. This is the day that he's ordained, and we thank him. On behalf of myself and the staff of Eternal Red Pure Heart, I'd like to first thank our minister for the inspirational message that we give to this family. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 To all the persons that came out for the homegoing celebration of Mrs. Warfield, on behalf of the family, he said thank you and God bless to you also. To the daughter and to the granddaughter, it was a great honor and a great privilege to serve you. We hope that we have done our very, very best. Ladies and gentlemen, in times like these, in times like these, we cannot get enough prayer. We continue to look to the hills of Calvary. God can and God will supply. All of our needs. Show it that sun is risen right now. It rise, rose this morning in the east. And this evening it will set in the west. God is still on the throne. He's still in control. Amen. Amen. Pastor, please give us a prayer of traveling grace, sir. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let us all say amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, you're officially dismissed. Thank you again, and God bless you. Amen. Everyone, please rise. Pastor Lord, please. Thank you, dear. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 The red and white one's face. The red and white one's face. Oh, okay. <laughs> 